I'm here at Mobile World Congress Los Angeles and the talk here is obviously about 5G. The whole world is going to 5G and it's unlocking a lot of potential and a lot of services potential for uh, carriers and for enterprises and possibly for consumers down the road. Um, but we're in this really interesting spot right now where there's a transition between 4G and 5G. We're not at true 5G yet, but every network has its own schedule and how it moves from one to the other. And that's what's really interesting to me is this this evolution of the core of the network, um, going from a 4G core to a 5G core, and as we're making that progress, we're not only changing the way that networks are built, we're changing the kind of services that are possible on those networks. And as you'll see in this video, the implications of that change have yet to be felt, but they're just around the corner, and every carrier is getting ready. Let's talk about the 5G core. Um, yeah. It's hugely important in the network and it's a complete change from what's happened in previous iterations of the wireless network. Um, first of all, what's changed between 5G and 4G and how do you adapt to that change as a, as a carrier? Yeah, so there's a couple things there. So the 5G that we have launched um, currently is on the 4G core and we did that consciously to be able to bring the power of 5G out to our consumers and enterprise customers sooner. Uh, the 4G core is very stable, and so we wanted to make sure that we had the edge working first. Um, but now, as you said, we are moving to a 5G core in 2020. That core will be far more virtualized and will be based on software-defined networks, opposed to um, purpose-built hardware that we've had in the 4G core in the past. And so that will allow us to do network slicing which will allow us to provide um, unique customer experiences based on what that customer needs, again, whether they're an enterprise customer or a consumer. Uh, Jay, tell me about the, the, the journey that we've taken from the 4G core to the 5G core and what that unlocks for a carrier like Sprint. So our initial launch for a mobile broadband product is we were able to leverage our 4G LTE core. Uh, mm -hmm. And part of that is, that, and leverage also all the signaling that LTE does. Right. Eventually, to get to really low latency and, and IoT type of applications, you need that low latency. We're going to a standalone 5G core. Um, we'll start lab testing about the end of the year, and, and we're looking forward to starting a, a standalone uh, 5G core first half of next year. What type of uh, things, it, for, for the carrier, what, what does that unlock in the, in the, you know, down the road compared to what, what's possible on, on a 4G only network? Automation type of applications, I'll use that as an example, or, or machine to machine require both high bandwidth as well as low latency or time to get to the internet or even talk to each other. And so you need that 5G core to drop your latency down to where it's not like mobile latency. And then, so you need that to actually, for these machines to talk to each other or et cetera, so that you actually don't have that delay to where they really work effectively. 